This project is a harbinger of death for the environment and for the people. The people here are very poor, and they live right next to an extremely wealthy industry complex. This is scandalous and has caused suffering for 20 years. Something has to change here. This project has ruined many things here. This entire region, which you saw when you drove through, used to be rainforest 25 years ago. This project has resulted in immense noise, smoke and pollution of our environment when the iron ore is transported through here. Germany. Every year, six million cars are manufactured here. In 2013, revenues were around 400 billion euros. The industry supplies 800,000 jobs. This is where the natural resources for German cars comes from. In Brazil's northeast is Carajás, site of the world's largest iron ore mines. The Brazilian metals and mining corporation Vale is the principal owner. Thousands of freight cars transport the cargo across Brazil, almost 900 kilometers to the São Luís port. For the people who live here, the consequences are severe. Maria da Silva has an appointment every two weeks at a clinic in Piquia, on the outskirts of Asalanja. Even early in the morning, the waiting room is full. Maria has to sign up on the patient list for her consultation with Dr. Mauro Canero. People here in the region have a lot of health problems. Many have cancer or suffer from skin disease or contamination. Others have pulmonary defects or throat problems. We are suffering here with these illnesses. Why? Because we all live next to the smelting plant and have to breathe in the smoke and dust day and night. That's why we're sick. You can't be healthy if you live here. Dr. Mauro Canero has cared for Dana Maria for years. Like most of the physician's patients, she suffers from respiratory illness. Dr. Canero prescribes medication to at least mollify patients' symptoms. Due to the high level of air pollution, we have many cases of respiratory and skin disease. For instance, allergies and infections of the respiratory tract, children above all, are severely affected. The International Helsinki Federation for Human Rights conducted a survey of all inhabitants of Piquia de Baixo. The results showed that a large portion of the population suffers from disease. Around 65% complained of throat pain, over half of the population said they suffered from fever or severe headaches. These are consequences of the high levels of pollution that these people are exposed to, day and night. A portion of the iron ore in this region is already being converted to metallic iron at 14 smelting plants. These outdated industrial plants, which operate without filters, make for immensely high pollution levels here. The small town of Piquia de Baixo lies near one of those smelting plants. Dario Bossi and the organization Justicia Nostrillos have been fighting for years on the side of inhabitants against the multinational giant Vale. Maria Aldanir da Silva lives here with her family. The air pollution has left traces throughout their house. 
movimento não é garganta. Ah, essa é para tosse. Sim. É, e essa aqui é a cefaleia que está. And Dona Maria isn't the only one affected in her family. O filho de Dona Maria, o seu... Maria Aldania da Silva's son worked in the smelting plant for six months, but he was let go because of his lung problems. His employers never had him examined. They just gave him a blood test and then let him go immediately. But Dona Maria took her son to get x-rayed, and they found a large spot on his lungs suggesting abnormalities. This was the reason for his fatigue and shortness of breath. Maria's son was severely ill and, as a result, dismissed from work, and despite this, never received any compensation. Now he can no longer work or provide for his family, and he's stuck with abnormalities in his lungs. Praticamente sem possibilidade de trabalhar, sem poder garantir sustento da família e com uma mancha no pulmão. Tribo dos Carajás. Air pollution isn't the only issue. The rail line cuts through hundreds of villages and small towns, bringing noise and other dangers with it. In this region, numerous human rights violations occur, and there are many accidents along the rail line. Over the past nine years, there have been 770 accidents, and a large portion of these were fatal. There aren't any exact figures, but we know that most ended fatally. Children are constantly crossing the tracks and climbing over electric connectors. This is incredibly dangerous. The trains are long and extremely heavy, and this is why all the houses on the track are dilapidated. The ground shakes when the trains roll by. The daughter of Raimunda Di Castro do Paola was killed in an accident on the track. She was 36 years old and left behind two children of her own. With help from Justicia Nostrios, Raimunda and her grandchildren are taking Vale to court. They are demanding compensation and that the company take steps to prevent other such accidents from happening in the future. In a preliminary ruling, the judge has held Vale responsible, decreeing that the company must pay the family monthly. With this money, Raimunda can care for her grandchildren and rebuild her house. The melting furnaces burn day and night, which means quite a bit of fuel is needed. That, too, is produced here in the region. Just a few kilometers from Piquia de Baixo, we find the first charcoal pits. The workers aren't even wearing breathing masks. There are dozens of companies like this in the region. Well ahead of our visit, we requested an interview with the raw materials multinational Vale. We received no answer. The operators of the smelting plants refused to talk as well. At the charcoal pits, we went about asking in a different way. But the security workers explained to us that we are not wanted here. Taking a stand for the rights of locals often leads to conflict with the companies. From time to time, our work is dangerous because these companies violate human rights and we try to stop that. They demand that we keep off their private property. But we say this property is located on a country that belongs to others. They simply took this land and the previous owners were expelled. Of course, they paid for the land. But these companies took this land without asking permission from those who owned it before. The people were forced to leave their land, and today they are no longer allowed to set foot on it. In Piquia de Baixo, the companies have built their industrial plants without asking the population. We are endangered because we are fighting for people's rights, and these corporations are allowed to go on exploiting, 
as they carry out their extremely aggressive company politics, they don't have to worry about being threatened by anybody. In the charcoal pits, eucalyptus is the only wood burned. It grows exceptionally fast and burns intensively, ideal for the extraction of charcoal. Thousands of hectares of eucalyptus have been planted here in the past years. The indigenous rainforests had to be cleared. The endless monocultures have led to substantial problems. Where eucalyptus has been planted, nothing else can grow. Vale has bought massive plots of land for ridiculously low prices from these communities. The population was never asked. Environmental expert Marcos Vinicius takes us into an iron ore mine. Journalists are unwanted guests here, but together with him, we can enter the mine without being spotted. Massive iron ore craters are located right in the middle of a nature reserve. What are the consequences? Então, primeiro, há uma retirada da vegetação que fica At the opening of the mine, the entire vegetation is removed and gone. Existe um rebaixamento do lençol freático nessa área. Then the groundwater level in this area sinks. The fertile soil is eradicated together with the iron ore. Then the excavation material has to be unloaded somewhere. é feita uma supressão além da área da mina, que é onde a And that's inside the mine. Finally, the massive earth moving in the mine results in the creation of sediments, which combine with rainwater and flow into the rivers. This all makes for massive pollution in the local environment. Cúmulo, né, de sedimentos gerados pela água das chuvas que carregam são carregados para o leito dos rios. Brazil has quickly become one of the world's largest exporters of iron ore, and demand for raw materials knows no bounds. And there are plans for the near future to double production in the Carajás mines to over 230 million tons of iron ore per year. Before that happens, a second rail line will have to be built. The burden on the local people and environment will grow enormously. And what about Germany? Do car manufacturers care about where raw materials come from? Our interview requests at Volkswagen, Daimler, Audi, and BMW went unanswered. The same kind of silence as with the Brazilian corporations. The automobile industry is one of the largest job creators in Germany. The idea of sustainability appears to play no role here. For experts in Brazil, a clear lack of responsibility. The discussion today revolves around the question of how iron ore can be used in the global industry. And that's why all who use iron ore in their production are partially responsible for what's happening here in the Amazon. It is absolutely critical that car manufacturers put pressure on the mining companies and the smelting plants so that the way the iron ore is produced and extracted from the Carajás region is changed radically. The protection of the environment and the rights of workers must be a central factor. We know very well that iron ore from Carajás plays an important role in global supply chains and that it's processed in the production halls of the largest car manufacturers in Europe and the United States. There are hardly any cars in Piquia de Baixo, only people fighting to make a better living. But while the country of Brazil makes profits of around $150 billion per year by mining, the locals here just get poorer. 
Belen Pereira de Melio also works with Justicia Nostrillos. They want to work together to relocate this village on the fringe of a smelting plant. We urgently want to be relocated because the pollution levels are simply too high here. Life is no longer possible in Piquia de Baixo. Everyone is sick or suffering from asthma, skin cancer, lung cancer, throat cancer. Our health is under threat, and the public agencies just sit and watch this happen without doing anything. And the companies that own the smelting plants don't want to make any contribution to the relocation efforts. Land for the relocation already exists, and with it, dreams of a better life. But the companies are dragging their feet with making payments promised to the landowners. The resettlement isn't making any progress. Why isn't it making progress? The former owner of the land didn't want to give us permits, but we took our case to court and won. Now the companies have to make their financial commitments so that things continue to move forward. The city authorities, the regional government and the government in Rio, they're not doing anything. And Vale, the company that has caused so many problems here, has refused to take responsibility. All these projects, including the massive Carajás project, were approved because the companies said they would develop the region and provide more quality of life, more jobs, more prosperity. There was an unbelievable amount of propaganda, but the dream of more prosperity has not come true. It was a dream of the military government 30 years ago that Brazil and the region here would rise to the first world with the Carajás project, but that dream just remains just a dream. Danilo Chamas of Justiça Nostrios visits Katia Akratikatega. She lives in an indigenous reservation not far from Maraba. A few years ago, Vale moved her entire village to make room for a dam. The next tribulation is around the corner. The new Vale rail line is planned to go right through her reservation. Now the train line comes and threatens us. You mean the new Vale rail line? Yes, exactly. They want to extend the track. Yes, and we are affected again. Before it was the dam that forced us to relocate, and now it's the new rail line and the road that is planned to go right through our indigenous reservation. Katya's father fought against the relocation for years. He passed away a few weeks ago. Although Brazil has signed on to international agreements that protect indigenous peoples, economic interests appear to be more important for the country. The train tracks that run through the region are symbolic for the removal of the country's wealth. Twelve trains, each carrying 30,000 tons of minerals, roll out of here every day towards the São Luís port. The doubling of the railway line violates the rights of the indigenous people, as defined in international charters. The feasibility studies are insufficient, and the licenses are issued without any dialogue or consultation with the indigenous population. With assistance from Justiz en Ostrios, village representatives are taking legal action against Vale and the environmental agency IBAMA. They argue that Vale is in violation of ILO Convention 169, which states that indigenous and tribal peoples must be consulted before large projects that endanger their livelihood, such as the Carajas Line, are carried out on their land. This evening we visit a school in Piquia. 
Justitia Nostrios has written a play about the problems surrounding the Carajas Corridor. The attempt to portray the dramatic situation in the region on stage with humor is a winner with the kids. The next morning, we arrive in the port city, Sao Luis. The Vale plants are situated just outside the city. Just recently, a new pier was built here. Cisleni Costa da Silva of Justiz en Ostrios is accompanied by a fisherman. Every single day, freighters cast off from here, full of iron ore for China or Europe. The expansion of the port has largely destroyed the fishing grounds here. Valle has pledged financial compensation, but not every fisherman is compensated equally, which has led to problems. When they were deciding who was to be compensated, Valle conducted a study that categorized fishermen according to what methods they used and what their calculated earnings were. This was the basis for deciding how much the fishermen were to be compensated. This led to almost immediate divisions within the community, and there were public conflicts between the fishermen. We have observed that Valle employs this strategy quite often. We have observed that Valle employs this strategy quite often. Divided communities are less likely to form social movements. There are a few fishermen who are satisfied with the compensation payments, and these are less willing to stand up for those fishermen who didn't fare as well. Many fishermen were driven away from the region by Vale years ago. For those who have stayed, there's almost nothing left in their nets. The Carajas project, which promised to rejuvenate the country and the region 30 years ago, can't take the concerns of a few thousand fishermen into consideration. We have no future here. There are no fish to be caught. We used to have a good life when there was enough fish to provide for us. We were never wealthy, but we could live well from what we caught. Everyone was happy. A few days later in Rio de Janeiro, the workers at Justiza Nos Trios are preparing for a Vale shareholders meeting. They want to draw attention to the environmental issues in the Carajas region. For months now, it's been known that Vale has been spying on Justiza Nos Trios. Email accounts have been hacked, telephones tapped. For some time now, a number of organizations that deal with Vale have noticed security breaches. Last year, a former employee at Vale admitted publicly that the company systematically spies on social movements. The next morning at Vale headquarters, The members of Justiz en Ostrios have bought shares so that they can officially take part in the meeting. As is typical with Vale, journalists have to wait outside. Two hours later, none of the shareholders are willing to talk to us about sustainability or the topic of environmental protection. I am very disappointed. 
I thought, as a resident of Piquia de Baixo, as someone who has to live with the pollution, that I would get answers. I am enraged that we have been rejected. We haven't been given any answers. Silence from Vale. And the big companies in Germany aren't saying anything either. What about the consumer? Do drivers care about where the materials for their cars come from? That is a good question. Personally, I've never been asked this before. Why do you think that's the case? I think the question isn't asked because people only care about the product and not how it's actually produced. Back in Piquia de Baixo, Dario Bossi accompanies Donna Maria to the cemetery. The 45-year-old must deal with constant visits to the doctor, for herself and for her sick son, and both her sisters died in the past years of pulmonary cancer. Standing on this cemetery right now, I feel a mixture of grief, powerlessness, outrage and anger. This is the anger of our people, of Dana Maria and many others that are now gone. The next five years have to bring many changes. Nobody, no child or grown-up, no human being should have to die because of the pollution here. We want results. We want our village to be relocated and for the experiences of Piquia to be a symbol for all the people who have fallen victim to this economic model. Thirty years of Carajas have indeed left an indelible mark on this region. Tribu dos Carajás, noite de lua cheia, lua na, menina moça é quem manda na aldeia. A tribo dança o gran chefe, pensa em sua gente, que era dona. Deixe imenso continente onde sonhou.